Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. And today we have Devin Herz. He's founder of Dynamic Marketing Consultants, also known as DMC. He has over 20 years experience in helping businesses break through the clutter. You said this in an interview and I liked it and I put it in here. You help businesses break through the clutter with direct marketing to get more customers. Their past clients include University of Colorado, Allstate, GKIC, Fight Night Productions. We'll talk about some of their campaigns, which are really cool, and numerous small businesses like dentists, lawyers, and fitness professionals. Devin, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, I am really excited because you have some really cool uh, information to share with different packages. I always like to start with a fun fact. Uh, fun fact, if people haven't noticed on the pictures behind you, you were a bat boy for the Yankees. Tell me about that. That's a little bit of my claim claim to fame there. Um, yeah. Had the, the fortunate uh, opportunity to work with the New York Yankees back when I was in high school. Um, I'll give you my age now. But uh, right around 93 and 94, my last two years in high school, I went to a minor league game to see a uh, pitching phenom that never actually made it to the big leagues. But I uh, was in Palm Beach at a game and heard people talking behind us. Uh, they happened to be people that ran the Fort Lauderdale Yankees, the minor league team, as well as uh, spring training down in Fort Lauderdale at the time. Got talking with them and opened my mouth and said, do you have any job opportunities? And they said uh, at the time they were looking for someone to come in and, and be a bat boy. Uh, I played baseball through high school and also through college. So this was a, a pretty did. cool oh, wow. experience yeah. <laughs> to, to be able to uh, work alongside with professional athletes and also under the roof of George Steinbrenner. So that was a uh, quite cold down in Fort Lauderdale and uh, fortunate enough got to not only work the minor league team for a couple years but got to work a couple years of spring training so got to meet all the, the celebrities all, all the big names that I idolized growing up uh, Reggie Jackson, Whitey Ford, wow. Yogi Berra, George Steinbrenner himself, um, Don Mattingly who is one of my idols now the coach of the Dodgers yeah. um, so it was great to to meet them work alongside see how that organization was really run and uh, of course get to to play ball with some of my idols was That's amazing. quite an experience. Yeah. So what did you see with how the organization was run that you still take to your business? Well, those that know about the Yankees, they're very, very by the book uh, to the fact that you can't even wear facial hair. You have to get dressed up if you're traveling. Uh, so that professional atmosphere and uh, just the way that the, the players handled themselves, the management handled themselves, they were a professional team and they had one real focus and that was getting to the World Series and winning the World Series. So the yeah. determination was just awesome to see uh, the way that the team came together and just the inner workings of, of that particular complex and all the different, even all the way down to the minor league system on how those um, the managers and the coaches, they all acted and then the higher management, of course, I got to see that as well. So it was just a, an overall amazing experience to see how something is, is run correctly. And uh, there's no one that can really argue with their, their, um, their past Track record and yeah. all their records, amazing. right? So uh, we know they do it right. So that was a great thing for me to see as I was growing up and as uh, an entrepreneur and wanting to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I was able to get some, some great insight working with them. Devin, I was also watching a bunch of videos of you to prepare for this. And one of them you mentioned we do jaw-dropping type of campaigns. So I wanted to ask, what are some of those campaigns that you help people, your customers with, that made customers' jaws drop? Sure. That, that's really my, my ultimate solution with any type of, of campaign that we're working on. Uh, of course, they range in price points and what we can actually incorporate into the campaigns. But uh, yeah. everything that we do, we try to make sure is unique and different and can grab as much attention as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple campaigns that, that come to mind, one being, uh, and some of the people in, in the marketing world may have seen this or even received uh, an actual uh, marketing piece that we've done, was a die-cut wanted poster shape of uh, an old school wanted poster look like it had burnt edges yes uh, 
the person's name was actually shot out in bullet holes at the <laughs> bottom. So everything That's that we great. do includes variable data personalization. We're able to customize each image for the target that we're going after. And inside that mail tube, uh, yes, it's a little crazy in this day and age. For the right demographic, it still works, uh, but you got to be careful. Um, but we actually put a 50 caliber blank bullet in the mailing tube that had a label on it that would say something like, give us a shot. Um, so uh, hit, the bullseye, hit the bullseye with your next marketing plan. So this yeah. was a campaign that we actually implemented for, for my business up front. Um, it was something that we sent out to about 90 different businesses and what we call whale type clientele, trying to at least get a conversation started with them. Um, and uh, with that, we landed about seven or eight clients, uh, a couple of them which are still clients till this day. And the only reason that we got through to them was it was a multi drop campaign, but that bullet just uh, stayed in people's mind. Then we also. Uh, at a GKIC event, we uh, were, were lucky enough that Dan happened to come by our booth uh, that we had there at the time, Dan Kennedy, and uh, saw this campaign and said that he wanted to implement it for GKIC. So mm -hmm. we then had the privilege to do that for one of their super conferences where we did the entire uh, wanted poster theme for that particular event as well. So uh, that was a great thing. And talk about creating a, a buzz and a uh, little bit of controversy. We, we definitely um, had people that were talking about the bullet. And uh, it was quite funny when we actually talked to some of the people that were in Australia that were on the list. Uh, they had some problems with the police there because of those <laughs> mailings. So I've always wanted to come up with marketing campaigns that create that buzz. And, that's a, that's a uh, really <laughs> true buzz when the police yes. come to your door. <laughs> Absolutely. And you had another one. I want to talk about this one for a second because I was looking on you know your DMC dot com it's your website and you have a bunch of really cool lumpy mail whenever i look through those it, it just stems a bunch of ideas where did you come up with that the wanted poster and the the bullet yeah the 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 creativity uh never really runs short here i mean that's one thing that i love to do is is what is the campaign going to consist of? How are we going to make that impact? And, and my team that I have on board with me has been nothing but phenomenal uh, to help out and aid in some of that creativity. That one, I think, really was because we wanted clientele. And, and it just came through myself and my business partner at the time. Um, we developed the, just the idea and the overall theme to this campaign. So we're like, you know, this is something that we're mailing to mostly men on this list here. Uh, they're fun. They get it. They're kind of edgy businesses. It's not a lot of very high corporate type of uh, atmosphere that we're trying to get through. Um, so that was really where we came up with the wanted poster. Um, our personalization were, was things that we in, invested in as far as the software that gave us the capability to do that customization with the piece. Um, so we invested in that and a lot of different printing equipment at that time to, to keep us ahead of the curve and really stay cutting edge with the, the marketing pieces that we were putting together. So it was just, what can we do different? And, yeah. and sending a bullet to them was just so far out there that we said, perfect, and uh, let's do it. Yeah, because I could see you stopping right at the wanted poster, and that would grab people's attention alone. Correct. I mean, what is the creative process? Are you sitting in a boardroom with a whiteboard? You know, just cause for other people who are trying to sure. brainstorm and think of, you know, what should I be doing? Right, right. Well, I mean, you got two sides of it. You got my own marketing that we've been doing for many, many years, which is probably the hardest thing to work on your own marketing because you're never really 100% satisfied. There's a lot of times you just got to learn to wipe your hands and say it's good enough. Let's get it out there so we can actually get some traction. Um, <clears throat> what we do is is we have a, a series when we're work, working with clientele or even internally, um, a series of discovery calls, meetings, brainstorms. So the first thing that we're going to do is really analyze our client's situation, understand what their pain points are, what they're going through, areas that may be going well but can use improvement, things that they may not even have in their systems. So that's where we'll, we'll come in and analyze those different things. So if we're given a task to come up with a prospecting campaign. We really find out what the main things are about the benefits, uh, the pain points that we're going to try to uh, eliminate for the prospect that we're going after. Is it something that could be themed? Uh, we've had a handful of uh, Texas clientele going after Texas business owners. The wanted poster with bullet works fine, um, you know. But we have also high-end corporate software company that's not going to send a bullet, so we need to come up with other ideas. So 
there's so many different items, whether you go to a dollar store and pick up a trinket or uh, promotional items and different things that you can use to tie into your marketing message. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times we will try to theme it so it does have a rhyme and reason why I'm getting this particular piece as a multiple drop, a uh, drop one and then a drop two is something different. Um, our real technique is to make sure that we're introducing who you are, especially on a cold list, which is the hardest to break through. Mm -hmm. Introduction is very important. Educating them, making sure that you're really coming through as the trusted provider, so therefore it becomes easier to sell them. A lot of businesses try to go right after the sale, buy my stuff, and they don't even know who you are, so the chances right. of them actually doing that. So. Um, Information marketing, educational marketing, building that trust, building that credibility uh, has really helped uh, our clientele as well as ourselves through the years to so just keep giving out good information and not have to really uh, be selling every single thing that you come up with. And I think that's what's helped our business and as well as other clients. So, Devin, what did you put on the wanted poster? Um, Do you remember? I do. Um, I probably have one somewhere. I have to find it. But yeah, uh, if you have one, go grab it. If you yeah. is, there, is it close? If, if it won't, yeah. I, if it may not yeah, be go mine, ahead. but I'll grab one. Give me one. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you have uh, visually, that'd be cool to see. For anyone just listening to this, he's going to grab the uh, the wanted poster, and so we can actually see what it looks like and and what's on it. Hope, uh, everyone got yeah. to take a bathroom break there. But, um, <laughs> I yeah, should have asked you to grab a few now, this... props in the beginning. That's what I should What's have. Done. I should have asked you to grab a few props I, in the beginning. I actually do. But oh, I good, good, good. On it poster, so I do have some more show. Yeah, and let's tell. see that. Um, yeah, this is an, an example of a, a wanted poster here, yeah. and uh, this is actually for another marketing company that does uh, online marketing for modelers. Okay, and uh, I'll, I'll share some results with you on this yeah. camp. But uh, just a, a cool looking piece. It's it's rolled up into a mail tube, and then this is the uh, the small bullet that we That's put in. That's big. There. It's so huge. <laughs> it's a fifty caliber. I mean, oh you can God. see it off of my hand. It's a wow. It's gonna so it sticks around as a paperweight. It sticks on people's shelves. Um, but really, what we're talking here is wanted um, remodeling contractors that know leads are as good as gold. So we had this whole campaign going with this gold theme. Um, we had a treasure map in one of the next mailings. Uh, so hmm. it's uh, it's it, it it allows us to have fun with the campaigns, especially when our clients uh, give us a blank canvas to work with. Yeah, I asked because you said you know obviously you want to build trust and maybe not ask for the sale right away. So what do you ask for? In that, or is that more one of the end campaigns where you are asking for a sale? We're always, I mean, no matter what, of course, we're trying to sell um, and we're trying to get them to engage. So um, on that particular campaign that we did and, and even this campaign here, um, we're driving to a landing page, uh, an opt-in area. Uh, we, for our campaign, we set up uh, Pearl's personalized URLs, which um, were very popular at one point, kind of dipped off, but they're, they're becoming uh, popular again just because they're, they're nice, they're unique, it allows you to talk directly to that audience. So right. soft selling, you know, find out more about us, um, showing them testimonials, showing them campaigns like I'm doing now and, and successful uh, campaigns so they get an understanding of the way we think. Um, there's tons of marketers out there. A lot of them are unique and a lot of them just do the same old, same old type of stuff. But when I, uh, usually show my stuff, if I'm doing an online presentation and, yeah. uh, anything like that, or if I'm even doing any kind of sales presentation, once I show them some of the designs and the products or just like, okay, now I get it. This right. is what sets you apart. This is what differentiates you. Yeah. And so you were going to say, uh, about that campaign, were there certain results you wanted to share about about that one or um, this one? Yeah, this one. Um, let me see if I so I make sure I read this correctly here. But I do. Uh, we literally and and uh, as a business owner, I think constantly evolving is is always a good thing to do. So um, you know, we're trying to collect as much data from any of the campaigns that we launch, so we can help out um, our future campaigns. Um, this particular campaign that I just showed you was a three drop campaign to a hundred people. Cost um, to actually send out a um, hundred of these three, you know, three different times. Again, there was three other, two other drops on top of this. 
Um, they spent about three grand on the actual deliverables. Um, from the campaign, we received a 5% response. These are going after pretty big companies. Yeah. And, and that's, a, that's a good response. Like what's average, like 1% or what? It could be anywhere from, if you're using just postcards and trying to get a sale off the first yeah. list, it could be 0%. Um, right. We've seen yeah. things that are up to 40% response rates. So there's so many variables, but really yeah. it's a matter of what's going to help you profit. You know, What right. is it going to take for you to get the, the money that you spent on this campaign? How are we going to get that back in your pocket? And then on top of that, turn it into a profit. Mm -hmm. um, so they, um, not only 5% response, but then um, my recommendation, especially on a small campaign, is pick up that phone. You're, you're now turning any cold, cold lead into a hot lead or a warm lead. They're going to know who you are. Pick up that phone and follow up. So they had an additional 3% um, of, of new things after the actual follow-up phone call. Um, let's see, they've got uh, several new consulting deals that are worth $15,000 a month, uh, which add up to about $180,000 a year no, uh, to their top-line revenue. So and they, he says, here, we're not done yet. We have two more leads from the campaigns that we should be signing up in the next couple of days. And now he's doing the campaign again, January, February, March. So um, that's the kind of testing that we're doing. Yes, it may cost a little bit of money to get something out there, but uh, we're not necessarily saying market to thousands and thousands of people. And there's right. a time and a place for that. But uh, when we're focusing on whale type of clients or we're trying to get through the gatekeepers to big decision makers, then I think starting small, seeing if we can get those people to actually react and take action, and then expand that campaign mm -hmm. out from there. So the, they already kind of had a targeted list of people they wanted to, to hit with this. And when you say you do a three-step drop, is it the same thing? Is it similar? What What is in that three steps? This particular um, campaign that I just gave you some of the results on, it featured the wanted poster. Um, the first mailing actually was a treasure map. It had a um, short book, one of our other solutions called a Shook. Um, not everyone has the time and energy to actually write a full book, so we do a nice little cliff note version <laughs> okay. for you. Um, so it included that. It also included a little gold bar magnet with his branding on it that actually looked a lot cooler than I thought it was going to look. Um, so that was great. And then we use different types of envelopes. Uh, I don't know if you can see mm, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, different envelopes. We're cool. trying to make things show up. And if you see here, private invitation for um, little things like that that you know these things are going to get open. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that That's was not going to land on your desk. You're not, you know, you're That's gonna be like, what is this gold envelope? Yeah. Exactly. Um, wanted poster with bullet was the, the second uh, drop. Then the third drop we did a, uh, it looks like a little deed. So, so I'm basically saying now it's time for you to capitalize on your gold and uh, you found the right place for it. Sign here. Yeah. I, I was surprised that actually he got some deeds signed That's great. and faxed back to him. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty pretty cool to hear as well. So um, yeah, that was a three drop campaign. Different um, different look different look and feel. Same kind of theme throughout mm -hmm. the entire campaign. Building credibility again, testimonials, um, driving them to websites that had videos on there for more information. Mm -hmm. And getting them to opt in for a consultation, a free report, whatever it is that we're we're working on, and what we have to do uh, added value to your to your actual incentive there to get people to sign up. Yeah, and Devin, you're over 20 years experience. Why three, not four, not two? Was there is there a rationale there? Why you said for this particular one you did three? Sure. Um, the fact that he did have someone that can do a, a follow up. Um, we try. We feel that marath uh, that basically marketing can take a very long time to to get through to these people. Um, so we try to speed that that sales cycle up. So really, we got this out and done within about sixty days. Pick up the phone. So you're in and out of a campaign like this in a, in a couple months, and you can really start generating results and seeing how it worked out for you. Um, we have done. 10-step campaigns, we have done one-off type of campaigns. So it really just depends on what the outcome is, what you're trying to achieve. Uh, we all know that the more consistent you are, the more touches you get, the right. more chances you have. And uh, you know, I have dentist clients that I've had in the past that will do a mailing with you. And you try to do a mailing to get new people into a dentist office, not easy. They either have a dentist, they don't want to go to a dentist, they have no need to go to a dentist. But staying right. in front of them, so all of a sudden they break their tooth at dinner, 
who are they going to think of? They're going to think about that person that's been right. marketing, to, marketing to them the most. Yeah. No one necessarily wants to go to the dentist. Exactly. What's, what's been the longest campaign? Like you mentioned, there's been, you know, three step, 10 step. What's been the longest one that you've done oh, for someone? I would say um, a lot of the longer campaigns are more of the retention type of campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, prospecting, we've, uh, again, done up to seven, 10 drops, but sometimes you got to say, okay, enough's enough. Or what we'll right. do is we'll hit them three times hard, but then the holidays come around. So you're sending a, another little nugget out to them, or you're sending you. a, a Christmas card out to them, a New Year's thing. So there's always an excuse to stay in front of them, but you don't necessarily have to be sending out something that costs you 10, 15 bucks every time that you're doing a mailing. But you already planted that seed. They know who you are. So trickling uh, some other marketing in the future out to them or uh, one of our other solutions is um, our mini zine solution is a, a great way to really stay in front of uh, most likely your current clientele prospects uh, but it's a way to also just take a different approach to uh, the standard newsletter that a lot of people use and, and come across differently. Um, I do have a, a couple of those here too. We'll continue yeah. show and tell. Let's see. What is uh, it? But, this is um, what we've done for uh, Donahoe Kearney up in Virginia area, actually DC I should say. Um, so here you see something coming across, does not really come across as a legal marketing piece or something no. trying to get your business. So um, this is a law firm and then we have um, oh, yeah. different feel good articles in there, um, a letter from the Frank and the actual firm. So it's a law firm. Yeah, this is a law firm piece, mm -hmm. um, but nothing really coming across of, hey, if you get in an accident, call me, but here we are giving good information, articles, they could be local um, articles, personal interest stories, so he's been doing this for several years now with us, and it's just been something that can go on every single month. We handle, we do an interview, we can handle the writing, the design, and then the printing for them. So we go through a couple proofing sessions. Uh, this is another one. I think this was their uh, two-year anniversary of their actual mini-zine. Hmm. Uh, so it's just a small magazine, and we do uh, riddles on the back. We do recipes. Here's a, a recipe. Hmm. Um, so yeah, just it comes across different. I would say probably classier than your typical newsletter, and it just starts to build um, build up steam on its own. Yeah. The more that you send that type of marketing out. No, I love seeing that. Um, you know, I want to get in your background. It's really interesting, but I want to ask about another jaw dropping solution because I was again watching videos, and I saw some really cool stuff. Um, I think it's called the Print Division. Yes, um, that's tell me about that. I saw one, you opened it, it was Michigan, University of Michigan, it was really cool, yeah. I, you know, I, it attracted me, my wife went to Michigan, so, okay. so okay. I'm like, oh, they attention. will they will love this, yes, so tell me about the print division. So you've heard me saying, uh, staying in front of, of the technology and understanding some of the marketing trends that are going on, so that's something that we absolutely love to do, and if we can bring something to the public that's no one else is bringing. That's really what we try to come up with. Um, right. <clears throat> so back in the day, it was always uh, an idea of ours of how can we incorporate video into our printed materials. Uh, the cost was ridiculous. The the technology really wasn't there. So we just followed it for for many years and were able to see how things were evolving and started doing some prototypes and samples. Um, and then we got to a point to where this could be something that's affordable. The quality of the product is is definitely gotten a lot better. Um, so this is something I would say probably about four years now that we've actually been uh, producing and selling. And because um, it's you, got an actual LCD screen inside of the, or they look like that when you opened yeah. it. This is a this is a hardbound book version right here. Um, so you can see really good quality uh, as far as the, the look of the book. Oh, yeah. Looks and when you open this up. <clears throat> that, is, that is really cool. So um, it, this is uh, supporting evidence on their product. And you can go through multiple chapters and have different things on here. So how much storage does that have? Like, uh, how long can the video actually be? 
So there's there's different uh, versions. We have ones that have all the way to a business card size that are like a 2.4 inch screen, all the way up to about a 10 inch screen now. And, 10 inch uh, screen. 10 inch screen. Yeah. So it's basically. I can like, use it like as a second monitor on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, it's like a tabletop book that has this great screen in there. Um, so it does vary. Uh, I would say the the common units uh, probably are 20 to 30 minutes of video. Some of the other units can be up to an hour of video. No one's going to sit there and look at a smaller screen for an hour or more. Right. So just enough information. But it's right. really the only vehicle that allows you to put your branding, your printed materials, and a video in someone's hands. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're handing them an iPad and they have to go to an app and download it and right. they can get distracted by everything else. It is solely your image and your videos in there and uh, as Amazing. far as how to use them uh, to me it's one of the best prospecting tools to whale types of clients because it's a jaw dropper um, to get them out to potential warm clients uh, to you know, build on everything that you have because you can put that video testimonials on there put case studies on there <clears throat> so um, just an awesome sales tool when it comes to uh, building building the uh, celebrity behind you yeah. um, and just even as a, as, a, as a giveaway depending on what a client's worth to you really is how that, that goes so yeah. um, I have no problem spending 50, 60 bucks to a, a warm client to hope that they sign on with me for one of our bigger programs and um, mm -hmm. it's just been good realtors have been using them for uh, pre-listing meetings so if they yeah. have a listing agreement I was going to um, ask how are yeah how are different people using them? Yeah, so they'll they'll send out the uh, the video book prior to their meeting that they have scheduled, and that just uh, builds awareness of everything that differentiates the uh, the actual realtor. Um, so they're able to get that out to them. Um, some of the realtors will, if it's a big enough value of a home, they'll leave them behind. If not, when they come to meet with them, then they'll actually pick up the book. Uh, we use it ourselves. Uh, this is mine. I don't have it charged, so I can't show it to you as far as the video goes but um, <clears throat> we get off a phone call we feel that we have a, a good prospect we send this in the mail to them and it just really shows uh, some of the portfolio pieces and those testimonials and that has helped us uh, get our foot in the door with so many businesses that we really couldn't have um, if, if we didn't use it. Uh, it could be used as an info product, it can be used um, in many many different ways but I would say as a, as a prospecting tool it's probably one of my favorite yeah. things to use. Do people use it as an info product also? Yes, you can. Um, and the, I would probably say on more of the seven-inch screen monitors and up. Um, like that actually, one. What was the one you just showed? Was that um, this? That was a four-point-three-inch screen. Okay. So a seven-inch screen is you know bigger than your Samsung yeah. phone and close to a tablet size. <clears throat> so you can have PowerPoint presentations. Um, we've had a company that actually would have salespeople out in the field. They would go there and we position the book to where they can actually set it up as a little tabletop. Yeah, yeah. The monitor was this way and they were able to say, okay, well, enough of hearing me talk. Here's just a couple uh, testimonials here, things like that. So um, different configurations that we can help out with mm -hmm. to, to develop the video books. Yeah. So in universities use it too, it looked like? Yeah, they used it, um, I believe, uh, in, in multiple ways. Um, we did one, this is not a university, but American Airlines Arena used it for their season ticket holders to get them to re-engage for the following season. Yeah. Uh, university of Colorado um, used them, I believe, also for, um, I think it may have been sports as well to get some donations or different things like that uh, or also to discuss actual curriculum or, or different programs that they have in their university yeah this is really cool stuff so is there a minimum order for it or yes um, we really try to stick to a minimum order of about 25 or 50 okay and then, price ranges yeah. anywhere from I would say sixty five dollars on up. <clears throat> the more the quantity that you order, you, that price does come down. So yeah. it just really depends on on what you're trying to accomplish. But uh, if you have prospects and clients that are, are worth a good penny to you, then it becomes that, oh, that yeah. no brainer uh, type of marketing piece. Oh, for sure. Yeah, realtor. If they make you know five figures on a yep. sale, exactly. sixty five dollars is nothing. Exactly. Um, so. I also wanted to hear about one thing the audience can do right now to get a quick win, to get results, to get more sales with their direct marketing. You know, let's say a dentist comes to you and is like, I know I should be doing this direct marketing thing. I'm sure this happens a lot. Right. What, what do I do? Where do I start? <clears throat> what do you tell them? 
Sure. Um, the, the main thing is to do something. Um, right. <laughs> that's really what, what has to happen. A lot of people sit there and say, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure why people are not coming into my establishment. Well, you're not marketing, and then that's probably why. Um, so, so doing something is very important. I, I'd say that the best thing and the easiest way to get immediate traction, of course, there's email blasts, there's online opportunities and social media, making sure that you have that structured uh, well. Emails are very, very hard. Everyone's inundated with so many different messages that it, it's tough to actually get through to email and open rates anywhere from 10% to 30% on the high that we see. Um, so it's hard to really get people to take action off of that. Uh, social media, of course, is another great way. Um, people tend to drive people right to their website or they're talking solely about their business. So making sure those social posts are more fun. Uh, I think things that are actual personal and vacation type of stuff or talking about your dog probably gets more traction than you talking about your business. Right, yeah. um, little things like that. But then also directing them to a potential landing page, opt-in page versus just sending them right to your website mm -hmm. uh, so you can speak directly to them and get them to take action. Um, as far as... Um, there's things I think internally you should be looking at, uh, making sure that everything as simple as that phone call that's coming in, you're asking the right questions, you're not sounding like another dentist that they're calling down the road, you're actually engaging, you're asking them questions that get them to open up to feel like you actually care about the person you're talking to. Yeah. Uh, very, very important. So um, one of our, our mentors, uh, Tom Feldenstein, always talks about being remarkable. What can you do inside your office to be remarkable? doesn't cost you any extra money to be nice, right. uh, to do the little things as simple as a thank you card that goes out after their visit. Yeah. So make sure you look at those things first because those are easy to fix and sometimes we totally miss out on how we're handling our clients and leads that are coming through the door. Yeah. That would be run, one recommendation on the internal side of things. Um, when it comes to marketing and doing direct mail, that's something that you have to do in a, in a smart way. Um, I feel looking at current clientele, and this may not be right for everyone, but looking at current clientele or past clientele that has not been into your, to your place of business or has not ordered from you in a while, those are the, the audiences that you should be attacking first and having a good strategy to go after them. They already know who you are. They're most likely, if you, if you did a good job, they're most likely happy with your service, but for some rhyme or reason, they have not come back in um, or they just haven't needed to. So staying in front of those people consistently is, is key. Um, doing reactivation types of campaigns to get people that haven't been in for a while um, is, is really a, a better bet than versus going after a cold list that doesn't right. know you at all. Right. Um, so that would really be my recommendation. Look, in, look internal. Make sure your things are being handled right. There's an onboarding process. If you're selling something of any uh, decent value, making sure that they got a nice little welcome gift or a welcome kit. Uh, those little things that can really make a difference and uh, show that you care. Yeah. And Devin, you talked a little about, you know, in the beginning, you're from Florida. I want to hear about what was it like growing up? You know, okay. what were some of the big influences? Okay. I would say that um, I had um, growing up. It was it was quite interesting. My my father um, back in the eighties owned seven retail stores throughout New Jersey, Atlantic City, and uh, different areas uh, up in the Northeast. Um, I was uh, in the stores a lot. I was behind the register even at seven, eight years old, really? learning how to ring up something in the register, watching my dad count the cash. It was mostly cash back in that day. And what did you sell? Some what was in the retail stores? In the pocket. Some of it may not have been. Um, what did he sell? Something that is really healthy for you. No, he actually was in the uh, tobacco Christmas. cigar business oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before it became that fat in the 90s. But, um, yeah. but it was a very, very successful. It was also gifts and different things there, but very successful yeah. um, stores. And then, of course, um, the, the health um, started all the, the downside of the health with smoking and all that started really becoming evident in the 80s. And right. uh, so we, we he shifted and, and realized that it was time to see the writing on the wall and get out of that business. But I was, I was really able to see um, how an entrepreneur runs a store and yeah. runs seven stores, um, deals with management, deals with people that are stealing from him. Um, so how do you deal with, with those things? Uh, how did he deal with them? Yeah, how did it get dealt with? Uh, sometimes not so well. <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, well. No, what I what I loved um, 
the the employees that were really and the staff that was putting in the efforts and really taking management control and that he was able to oversee that we're not taking uh, skimming off the the cash register um, how he took care of his staff how he made them feel like they're part of the family that they're really um, you know one together there wasn't uh, much of a hierarchy per se I mean yes you still have to have the the overpower and still be the boss but at the same time is is treating them like you want to be treated. Mm. Um, so it was everything that if, if someone needed a car because their car broke down, he was supplying a car to them to make sure they got to work on time. Um, over, you know, over working extra hours, working during holiday time, making sure they're being taken care of. Um, so that was always instilled in me. Um, and just um, on the marketing side of things, I think even back then I was uh, dabbling with drawing and, and art. Um, and we didn't have Photoshop at, at that time. So we were doing signage where we pencil draw the two lines and try to make sure the fonts were perfect um, for sales. So I got uh, involved in that. So I got to watch that really um, evolve and then go through some some bad times as well. And uh, to understand that, that businesses do not always go in, in a positive direction, but uh, by him evolving, bringing new products in, bringing some of the gifts in, even bringing lottery into his stores, he was able to find other means of revenue to, to pick up where some of the other business may have been being lost. Yeah. So what was uh, like the dinner table like? What were you discussing? You know, because he's grew it to seven retail stores. It's pretty significant. What were some of the lessons he was teaching you or what, what are your favorite stories that you remember from those days that you still think of to help you grow your business? That's a, a good question. I'll have to uh, search my brain cells for that. But, um, you know, with, with owning seven retail stores, I, I think you 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 do lose out a lot on, on being there with the family a lot. But uh, he did do his best to, to be there and definitely was a, a good father for me. Um, I, I just really the, the ins and outs of, uh, you know, of the high fives on the, on the good days when you're, you're happy and then the registers were, were getting filled with cash mm -hmm. and then the days where you're just dealing with these little issues that come upon us unforeseen and I, I think mm -hmm. all of us can relate to that is that yeah. you go into your morning business, you're all psyched, you're ready to go and then all of a sudden something stupid pops up and, and sure. all of a sudden you got to kind of rearrange your day. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's like I said, the ups and downs I remember member of, of being at, at the dinner table and uh, you know hearing the successes and, and how things are going good and then hearing that one store is failing and we're not paying you know able to really take care of the bills so shifting and, and how he was able to really maneuver that until he realized it was time to to sell the stores and, and move in a different direction which led us all down to uh, good old South Florida on the East Coast in Boca Raton where my parents got involved in the real estate industry so pretty much an entrepreneurial uh, yeah. business too because you're kind of your own boss in the real estate world and um, my dad failed miserably at it, um, and uh, really? that didn't go so well. So I got to see the downturn of business there. But then my mom uh, ended up doing very well with it, and still to this day is uh, now a, a, a pretty high up uh, marketing manager and, and office manager at a nice uh, real estate firm down in Boca Raton. So I got to see how real estate works. I uh, got to see how clients could be great at some times, and then they can really stab you in the back on some some things if you're if you're not careful. So. Right. Just protecting yourself and understanding yeah. that uh, things aren't always the way they appear, and, and just put your best effort forward to try to try to do the best that you can for your clientele. Then, when did you first get into direct marketing? I would say probably towards the tail end of uh, high school, just a little bit. Um, I had so a early couple on. friends. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was always uh, always into art, always into drawing, painting. Um, that was really what I loved. Um, once digital media became more prevalent and, and Photoshop came around, um, I of course took classes in, in college, but uh, I, I really wasn't getting a lot out of that. So I would be the one, not to say I didn't have fun in college, I definitely did, but uh, I would be the one sitting there at the computer late nights sitting there in Photoshop, teaching it to myself, learning the ins and outs. It wasn't as easy as typing in a Google tutorial or YouTube at the time. Oh, Photoshop um, so to just, me is like a foreign language, yeah. Yeah, it, and it was when I started me. too. Yeah. So I, I just uh, really taught myself how to do that. And um, how that evolved is that uh, I got my, my best friend and I and being in college, we wanted to have fun, but we also were studying hard and uh, I played baseball through college, as I mentioned, to my junior year. So yeah. it was hard to juggle different things, but we wanted to um, start a nightclub marketing promotion 
company. Wow. Um, so that is where it really, really got started with uh, myself and um, my team that I had at that time. Oops, excuse me. Um, my team and I really um, coming up with different marketing materials that were unique, um, doing things that were different, um, coming up with uh, events, uh, themes for events to, to just get people intrigued. Yeah. Uh, so, so we did that for about seven or eight years. I brought in wow. a lot of big national concert acts. Um, needless to say, I had an absolute blast. Got to meet so many great people and, and uh, a lot of uh, celebrities, a lot of great singers. Yeah. Um, and then, but really also seeing how money was uh, being handled through a, a nightclub or a restaurant or local businesses that we worked with. Uh, making sure that the, the, the door, there was cover charges, making sure that was being handled, counting out the money at the end of the night. Um, so learning the business stuff on the streets uh, on top of what I was learning in college, I think really completed everything that I needed to understand business and, and how to really run a solid business, not even just from the marketing standpoint, but from handling the staff. Um, keeping up with finances, keeping the momentum going with your marketing, and uh, evolving too. Uh, nightclubs are a perfect example, or restaurants, the ones that stay the same, have the same motif year after year after year. They become boring. Get stale. Get yeah. of it. So um, the ones that change, they'll add a new lighting system here, they'll add a new couch here, whatever it may be, they kept it fresh. And that I really took into my marketing as well and evolution of my business. I've uh, had a couple businesses, several different names, and you know we were the print concierge, and people pegged us as printers. So evolving from that to to the direct marketing concierge, where we were really <clears throat> kind of saying we're at your at your demand and whatever you need. To now where we are really the consultants telling you what you need to do to right. have a solid marketing plan. Yeah. yeah. So with the the nightclub, <laughs> which uh, which event that you put together? is the most memorable to you that it was the biggest or yeah. you met a celebrity what was the most memorable one yeah we have uh, you know different parties we also had the super bowl here in tampa so i met a, a ton of celebrities um i would say um this is this will give you a laugh here too um we had an event that we threw it was a, called a, it was a bar crawl event and it was called the college crawl okay um so <clears throat> picture a, a logo uh, kind of like the Yellow sign you would see at a crosswalk with someone actually a black figure on there, stick figure. Well, we had the stick figure where the guy was laying out basically holding a beer on the ground. And, and this was an event that we threw and it was probably about eight different bars that we coordinated. And we had a line down the, the block, um, just huge line just showing up to these events and um, collecting the cover charges from that. So managing not only just one nightclub, but eight different nightclubs, the whole bar crawl, keeping that going smoothly. Um, that was one of the events that we were very well known for here in Tampa. Um, Concert-wise, it's, it's all over the board. How'd you get the word out for that? What worked well <clears throat> for you to... Because that's, that's not easy. You say it like there are lines out the door, but there's businesses struggling to get a small line. Paper, paper and ink. You did. So you, at that point, you were still flyer. sending out. We were flyering like crazy. There was no social media. Um, so we literally would go out to USF, University of South Florida, and sit there with our little flyers and stick them on the windshields, go to the dorm rooms. Um, I had teams of people out there that were just out there hammering and doing the, the legwork and, and getting the word out. So that's really what it was at that time. We didn't do direct mail or anything, but we did the closest thing to it and got chased by a bunch of uh, RAs and, uh, you know, school security. But uh, mm -hmm. we got the job done and got the word out there and yeah. it just started to evolve from there that any kind of parties that we were involved with would be fun and and good. And uh, the concerts that we threw were great. I mean, it's, it's all over the board from George Clinton, P-Funk to... Um, Ice T to Shaggy to Rob Bass, a lot of the old school hip hop, mm -hmm. and then a lot of the techno DJs and different things like that too. So it was just a, a huge gamut of, of different people that we were able to actually yeah. meet, which is a, a riot. Yeah. And uh, so Devin, I want to talk more about some of the successful campaigns because you have a number of them and they're, I find them just intriguing to see what, you know, what you mailed out. And there was, um, could you talk about a few of those? There was a fitness one that looked interesting in your site. Um, I think it was Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan's Fitness Together. <laughs> yeah, and we... Uh, lumpy mailing. 
Yeah, it was a while back. Um, we did a lumpy mailer for Jonathan, and it uh, included a uh, one of the resistance bands. And um, he was someone that understood the fact that lumpy marketing works and 3D marketing works. And fitness together was kind of on the higher end as far as price point goes when it comes to a gym. Uh, more individualized attention. So we developed a um, a trash can mailer that had the actual resistance band in it. And something to the effect of stop throwing your your health in the trash type of deal. Like get that, back, yeah. get back in, and we have the little stretchy band in there as well. Um, so that did achieve a, a lot of good results um, for that campaign. I don't know. I think you had a couple numbers that we took from um, from uh, some of the testimonials that we had. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was a huge response, and I think he he. I cleared at least I think eight to ten thousand dollars off of something that he spent thirty five hundred dollars on, and I don't yeah. even think that's lifetime value really of how long these people stayed on there. So right, that's uh, just initial response, yeah. Which obviously yeah. with someone with their health is gonna they're gonna keep coming to you. Yeah. So fit fitness marketing, um, uh, that's those have been uh, pretty good campaigns there. We've also helped with some of the franchise, the higher up. Um, uh, businesses that actually have franchisees so we're developing marketing systems for those people so that way their marketing remains uh, consistent um, right now we actually did our own campaign one of my sales reps uh, Darren uh, is into Bikram yoga and it was uh, an area that I had no real experience with nor necessarily an area that I felt had the money to hire us for our services uh, but he felt that they did and that there was a need because there's so much competition in that industry right yeah. now. And uh, so we talked about it, went back and forth, and we developed a, a three-drop campaign to go out to Strictly Bikram Yoga Studios. Mm. Um, with that marketing piece, and, and these were just pretty much uh, old-school sales letters that we had some fun with, but they were they were good sales letters. Um, didn't even do a lumpy until uh, I think the last mailer. So we not necessarily do you have to do lumpies all the time. If you have a uh, a good pain point that you can touch on, you can probably get by by sending out a sales letter. Um, so we were hitting on the fact that Groupon is sucking up funds. They're they're losing out on competition and hit really hard on that pain point with them. And all of a sudden the calls started coming in, the opt-ins started coming in. Uh, we've got uh, we probably have I think eight steady. Um, Right now, eight or nine steady Bikram Yoga clients that we, we pulled on board, um, and they are all involved in a system that I put together that was spelled out exactly what we were doing for them. So we were filling, filling a lot of the holes that they needed filled to, to make sure their marketing was going on internally, the handouts, the, the brochures. Um, so we put together this system, and um, I mean, there's a perfect example right there of how marketing and direct mail does work. Uh, it probably works now better than ever because people are not using it as much. Mm. Uh, but we did that. That was out to 300 studios. Um, I can't even tell you what I spent, um, probably three times nine, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars probably on the campaign. Uh, within the first month, we generated $36,000 off of that campaign from selling that system. So Well worth it, yes. Uh, yeah, it's nice and I love So is your staff now tell you, I told you so? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did. But it, it's just awesome to see that direct mail and you know sometimes you're like oh is it really going to work is it going to happen even with my own campaigns but um, the results are, are really really coming in um, just from our own marketing and then uh, a lot of the clientele now and the longevity of our clients uh, just proves that the direct marketing does work and uh, as long as you've got the strategy the plan and that you buy into it and you're not giving up after you send out one or two pieces right. uh, there's just no silver bullet when it comes to marketing so it takes consistency it takes time building up that credibility yeah. and it's I not what people want to hear you know they want to hear you a quick fix i set out one thing and then yeah. everything yeah. pours in yeah. exactly well little targeted campaigns can definitely uh, i think yeah. i said this earlier but it, you know marketing is a marathon it does take a long time to build up your brand and, and notoriety but we really try to do with our solutions and the strategies that we implement and these types of smaller campaigns that are really niche marketed we try to take that marathon and really turn it into a sprint what can we do to get you the opportunities the quickest way possible so those are the first things that we will look at um, another quick example on um, some response that we we generated um, actually with the first Bikram Yoga Studio that we set up uh, some work for 
they uh, definitely needed a whole overhaul. So we did a full rebranding of uh, their entire studio, everything from logos to stationery to their signage. So that's stuff that we, we look at as well as to make sure that their brand is up to speed, that yeah. it's going to relate. And, and That's uh, good. It starts with the foundational thing. Oh, you yeah. don't leave it out and go, okay, we're just going to mail it and hope for the best. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you, I mean, did that, you start with that. Exactly. We're looking at, at the brand, making sure that, you know, these were, this was a studio that was trying to get affluent people in Long Island and it looked so outdated. And I was like, this has got to change. So we created a, a nice new brand for them and <clears throat> immediately they started seeing a difference. We also took their website. Um, we don't really do a lot of web design. We know how to, and sometimes we just do it to get it done. Uh, but we work with a lot of web designers to implement our strategies. <clears throat> and um, just by putting a simple opt-in form on their darn page, on the home page, uh, I mean, we're, we're carving on the uh, actual people that are opting in. And, and we're seeing you know anywhere from three to five people opt in a day just wow. by having that form on traffic they were losing out on in the past. Um, so just uh, with them, we did a reactivation campaign. I mentioned that would be the first place that we look. Yeah. <clears throat> just this month, um, where they really launched this campaign, their attendance is up 47%. Wow. Um, their first visits are up, and I saw these numbers when I was talking to him. He was telling me, I, I just, really? Um, first visits are up 139%. And then from the reactivation campaign, they got 31 students that haven't been in for six months or more back in the studio to sell. So That's amazing. Uh, yeah. more, more proof in the pudding. Oh, for sure. And um, another compelling one I was reading about, which sounded really interesting, was the Fight Night Productions. Okay. So what kind of stuff did you do with Fight Night? You know, what I was reading is, um, you know, something they couldn't fill the seats. There was like 600 seats and then they were turning people away on a 1,200 seat venue. Yeah, well, uh, with our event marketing, and uh, that was my background. That's your, yeah, that's your specialty. Yeah, so I forgot was, about that, yeah. Yeah, that was where it came from. He's like, oh, so. this is easy, yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, I remember, I remember walking into the office, and yeah, they had a little boxing thing that they did. <clears throat> they were getting a couple hundred people, not even. Um, they brought us on board, and I think we worked with them for about four or five years until he became a lawyer, and he went his own direction, the guy that was throwing the events. Um, so we, we basically set up all their marketing for them everything from their email marketing at the time, um, the posters to put up around town, flyers to, to get out to people, mm. um, and then of course any of the, the marketing once you got there too. So the, pro, the boxing programs, the banners, um, any other kind of promotional things that they were doing. Mm. So uh, helping them spread the word, having the right look and feel, building the hype from the marketing materials, uh, just really took it from this little local boxing thing to something that was on ESPN and ESPN two multiple times. Wow. Um, to one of their boxers too uh, ended up being a, a local champion and um, got some, I think, a fight on HBO. So it was just really, really cool to see the evolution of that, and it, it just really stems for how the the strategies were put together and and having a client that understands what we're doing and letting us do our thing, and that way their their marketing went on. Uh, uh, very very successfully and and yes they did uh, tend to outgrow and sell out some of the events that they held held here in Tampa. Yeah, and Seven, I know not all marketing we do works. So I want to talk about some that came as they didn't. But is there another one that sticks out to you that was successful before we move to the next one? Yeah, I think. Um, the video books, um, we've done uh, several video books now for a lot of different industries. Um, uh, another um, marketing, I shouldn't say marketing, but uh, an online, someone that was doing uh, website design and some search engine optimization was looking to get in front of dentists. Um, so he used the video book that was part of a multiple drop campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, he really uh, <clears throat> gives his, uh, his praises on the fact that the video book was really the, the item that, that actually got people to take action. So mm -hmm. um, he was able to, to grab, I think, about eight key dentists um, from that list off of, off of that marketing piece. Um, other, I mean, the, the, the list goes on on different results, and there's been failures too, and yeah. that's, that's what I say. I mean, everyone goes to these marketing seminars, and they, they worship these guys like every single thing they touch is gold. Sounds very, that way, though, sometimes. Yeah, yeah it does, right? Yeah. Um, we're very yeah. real. 
Um, you know, the, we're, we're very honest. We know things are not going to pull in tons of money all the time or have the results that we're looking for. So split testing, um, starting slow, really trying to gauge what uh, offers people are reacting to, headlines people are reacting to. Um, so not just throwing all your eggs in the basket and just mass mailing, um, you know, being able to split tests and, and with our variable data printing, um, we're able to have something that looks the same but the offers switching out and we're able to track which offers are doing better. Um, so I would say that, that that's going to be a good way to, to go about it. We do uh, monthly birthday campaigns for clients and that's not going that can either be going to their current list but we really like to actually get prospecting lists and that's something that we help with too is the actual demographics the list mm. that we're going after narrowing down that broad idea of who your client is and, and coming up with that perfect avatar of really who we want to go after um, so for instance uh, with the yoga studios we knew that people that are athletic like yoga um, some of them. Um, so <clears throat> we didn't just go get an athletic list. We got someone that was doing high impact athletics like a marathon runner, um, a cross trainer, and we were able to get lists that we can target a message directly to them. So if you need an alternative workout that's low impact, but yet you're going to get great results, come into Bikram Yoga. Right. Um, so really niching that down when you can. Um, every door direct mail is, is another great thing that USPS has put out there. That's great for local businesses that really don't care who their audience is. They, they may serve everyone. Um, Quick Check is a very large uh, convenience store in the Northeast. Uh, we do EDDM campaigns for them on a monthly basis. And that's usually hitting about a, a three mile radius or so around their location with coupons. Um, those types of mailings we can't personalize, but is a great way to hit the masses if you have that local business where it would make sense to do that every door direct mail. So those are things that we help out with and, and really um, take the guesswork on how all that works as well. Is that, what is that the range of cost? Like if someone wanted to do that for their business, what would they be looking at for like a, if they want to send a coupon within a mile rate, like a, you yeah. know, a mile every or door, three mile radius? Sure, sure. Every door direct mail, and this is something that you, you can go online and probably do through USPS on your own with their templates and ugly graphics and things, but we try to take it uh, to the next step. Um, the campaigns that we're launching right now, uh, approximately EDDM has some unique sizing um, to the actual mailers, but um, I think it's about a six and a half by ten, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting those out the door about forty nine cents, all handled for that's you. That's great, um, and that's yeah. with the postage. So postage really goes when you're dealing that's with solid. standard bulk, mo bulk postage around thirty two, thirty three, thirty four cents. Um, when you do EDDM, it drops to sixteen cents, eighteen cents, somewhere in there. Um, so you do save on on postage, and uh, it is a, a great way to hit the masses if if that's your goal. Yeah, I love that. So what about what are some campaigns that didn't work, and why? When you look back, why did they not work? Okay. Um, yeah, as I said, there's definitely been been failures that we learned from. I think everyone knows that. Unfortunately, in business, you you learn from your failures. But um, I would say the the ones that uh, the campaigns that we were not using enough behind what we had to, to send out where we're trying to go after people and we're just using postcards. Um, we're not really honing in on those particular lists. I don't really want to call anyone out individually on some of those things, but um, yeah, that's fine. So, just generally yeah, what, what yeah. yeah. So that would be, I, I would say where you think you're going to, to mail out a postcard. That's, that's the one thing I've heard and you've heard in interviews that I've had in the past is that I'm going to mail out this one postcard and postcard my postcard marketing did not work because I just mailed out one but they say postcards suck uh, well they don't right. suck and they really work well if you're using them to the right person and you're hitting them consistently so if you think you're going to do one postcard mailing and get a return on that uh, definitely come into the wrong place those are campaigns that I would just uh, back in the day when you're trying to get business in the door you just take on and you do whether you agree with them or not um, and, and that's really what we stay away from. So if anyone does come to us and just say, I want to do one postcard out to a prospecting list, it's, we're not the right fit for them. Um, it's something that's going to take more, more time to really evolve. Um, 
trying to think of anything else that's backfired or any any funny funny tidbits i know with our, our mattress client we were going to have um these little plastic bugs in their actual mailer <clears throat> so we set up everything we went to the post office made sure the bugs were good and fit in within the postage well get the mailing all done sealed up and then probably a couple thousand pieces here and you're doing all this hand work with these little bugs and everything <clears throat> take it to the post office gets rejected um, really one bug, the one bug in the shape of the bug that we got sample of and cleared on the postage was a little bit different shape than a couple of the other bugs that we put in the mailing so the entire mailing got rejected we had a pull all the bugs out and basically uh, that campaign there was it was still a decent campaign but we were not able to use the bugs as we intended so I mean that was just uh, little things with USPS that can drive you nuts um, whether it be sizing um, I had a campaign not that long ago that um, something as little as an address if um, let's just say this is a mailing area here and the address to the person that you're sending to um, is right here. I actually had um, in our design um, an address that was over here that was their location. Well, the USPS, when they scan it, it hit this address first. So all of a sudden, the postman was getting all these postcards going back to the actual uh. studio. So, I mean, little things like that will drive me nuts. Thankfully, that they all did get delivered uh, to the prospects and the campaign went all right. But um, <clears throat> there's definitely things inside and out with USPS and things that we learned. And over the years, we've learned to um, make sure that your mail does get through. So what have you, um, you know, what have you thought through your experience, this is definitely going to work. This is going to be, you know, just go gangbusters and then did not. And now obviously you don't do it anymore because you saw this did not work at all. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, of anything that really was just not, not uh, solid that I thought was going to be good. I mean, most of the campaigns that we think that are going to really make an impact um, typically do. <clears throat> um, I've launched uh, my own campaigns that have uh, not done so well, and that, that just may be the, the time of year, whether it be a holiday campaign that I'm doing where it may show up with a bunch of other stuff. Um, they're thinking about family, so uh, I think timing is also very, very important on when you're sending the mail to understand the different holidays when people may be on vacation. Uh, so I think there are some things that we've done incorrectly there where just uh, not the right time of year to actually put a promotion out there. Uh, I think uh, originally when I did a lot of marketing, always going for that sale, you know, hitting them up. You know, I got this special where save 20%, save 100 bucks, whatever it was. Um, that we were putting out there. A lot of those offers really did not work well for me and <clears throat> understanding marketing, I know why now, um, is people are very, very numb to those types of offers. They see it all the time. There's no real monetary value of the postcards, just 10% off of what, $10 off of what. Um, so by constructing good calls to action, uh, constructing added value and, and putting a good solid offer together is the difference maker in a lot of successful campaigns. So um, any way that you can add value, just think about that. What can you do that's going to stand out, whether it's giving them a, another free trinket when they come in, uh, a free session or a buy one, get one. Even those are, are better types of values than actually one, devaluing your business, but then also using those types of offers that people are so numb to these days. So, um, you know, get creative with your offers, um, have fun with them. Uh, another thing that we also look into, uh, especially with local businesses, because you probably have friends in the area or people that own other stores, whether it be a restaurant, a Whole Foods market, something that may be in that, the same niche demographic that you're going after to do a little bit of a co-op marketing. Hmm. Um, so uh, my, my wonderful uh, dentist uh, in Houston, Texas, um, <clears throat> he has no problem with his, his uh, patients eating chocolate or getting coffee. So uh, he actually sent them, yes, yeah. and uh, part of his um, mini zine, we had a raffle on there and they got a $50 um, gift card to, I think it's called the Chocolate Factory or the cho Chocolate Bar is what it's called. So um, it's just tying in fun things that are not a discount off of his dentistry. But if they come mm -hmm. in or if they answer the right question, they get something in, in value. That Promotes they another use. local business and they could team up. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great idea. And, um, you know, Devin, there is a client business relationship there. And I'm sure you wish it was like this, which is probably not, is someone goes here, you're the expert, 
do it. We'll listen to everything you say. Right. So what is the biggest mistakes people make because they're not listening to you? What are they pushing back against you? Because they have their own ideas, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, what are big mistakes people are making because they're maybe not listening to your advice? Yeah, I think um, you know we, we deal with a lot of people that are in the marketing uh, realm, too. So they're, they're followers of a lot of different gurus out there. And there's so many different... Uh, right. <laughs> ideas that people have and, and solutions that people have and they feel that they may need to implement everything at once. Um, they feel that uh, there's a, a right way and a wrong way with certain things. Um, not everyone is going to open a, a sales letter per se and um, and if you're going after a high-end marketing, not everyone's going to look at a sales letter that has sloppy little copy doodles on there or different things like that. Um, so understanding your market is, is is key. So some of these things that they say may work for all industries don't necessarily work for all industries. So understanding the audience and constructing the messaging and the look and feel uh, so they can relate to it. Um, so I think people do get stuck in some of that rut. Well, this person said this, this person said that, and by the time they're done debating with themselves on what's the right way, meanwhile, two months went by without any marketing going out, and they could have had 10 sales. Um, so I think implementation is key. Uh, thankfully, uh, we do a lot of upfront um, dialogue, understanding the clientele, making sure they're a right fit for us, because yeah. if we're going to be dragged down by someone right. that is not You get blamed in the end, you know, like, oh, this didn't work, and... But you didn't really listen to what I said exactly. exactly. Oh, and it, it could be small stuff too. And whether my my idea would have worked better than theirs, I don't know. But we tweak things sometimes yeah. to to fit their needs. Um, whether it be the actual item that's going in there, whether us recommending a a lumpy piece that may be fifty cents more than what they want, but we feel will have more impact or more staying power. Yeah. Um, What's one so, of those that you could yeah. think of? That do you remember one of those cases where? Um. um you know, they wanted this, and you're like, well, this would actually be better. What was one of those cases, just so I can kind of hear that? You don't have to name yeah. the person or, sure, or whatever sure. it is. Um, let, me, let me think real quick. Yeah. Uh, we, we wanted to do something with, um, and I'm sure you're familiar back in the, the 80s, the Rock'em Sock'em um, little uh, punching robots yes, that yes, they have, yes. the little red and blue one. Mm -hmm. um, so they actually make them for your fingers. So we had this boxing theme going, and I just thought this was going to be the, the coolest thing to use. Um, <clears throat> not that they necessarily didn't want to use it, but budgetary, time constraints, there were yeah. some things there, but um, we just went a different direction from what I really wanted to implement. And um, thankfully, they still got decent results, but I, I would say that the, the, the buzz and the fun part of it would have been... Uh, more evident, even at, at their event, people would have been talking about it more. They probably would have come to the event with their little rock'em sock'em. So you know things like that. Um, I would say that uh, different um, ads that we've done for different magazines, uh, people are they're just driving people right to their website. Uh, again, not necessarily hitting on the benefits and the pain points. Talking all about themselves. Uh, I think we all like to talk about ourselves. Sometimes you just got to sit back and, and uh, I always say, you know, the more questions that you can ask a client, uh, the more comfortable they're going to feel and the more information you're going to be able to get out of them. And, uh, you know, that, that famous question is, what do you do as, you know, what is your profession? What do you do? And they may say, I'm a dentist. Well, that's not really what you do. You're giving people their life back. You're giving them their smile back. They're giving them confidence. So there's a lot more to it than what you think you actually mm -hmm. do. So being able to touch on those points is key. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think that's that's really um, you know the best way to approach it. And then uh, you know I always go back to, to the the one-off mailers. You know it's it's just you gotta gotta stay out there in front of people as mm -hmm. as much as you, you mm -hmm. can. And, um, you know, that's that's really the, the the way to get results. And then the ones that give up on it, or they're maybe only focusing on one area, where they should be focusing on several different areas uh, when it, when it comes to your segment of your list. Um, to, to kind of at least get a few people from different segments versus just one segment per se. And that just depends on, on the, the client and really the, the right way to attack that. Yeah. And Devin, you know, since the Inspired Insider, I always ask the question about what's been the lowest moment and then how you pushed forward through that. Sure. And then the flip side, what's been the proudest moment because running your own business is really rewarding but it's it's tough as well oh, yeah. what's oh, yeah. been That's pros and cons yeah right? what's been the lowest moment 
The lowest moment, um, I would say that, that my business was on the edge of failure. Um, no matter what I did, um, and of course this happened when everything in the world was coming down on all of us, and I hate using that as an excuse, so I always try to just keep it out of my vocabulary, but it happened to me. Um, I, I grew my staff, I grew my overhead very large, I tried to follow the e-myth and, and have the right people in place that were better than I were at, at certain things, so uh, my staff grew over 10, 15 people at a time, um, getting printing equipment in-house, so I, you know, things were going great and you expect them to always go great. Um, so you stop marketing or you stop spending money on that. Um, so I would say that, that during the economic downturn that I definitely got hit with that uh, pretty, pretty darn hard. We talked about real estate. I had a lot of real estate business, a lot of real estate agents that were spending thousands of dollars with us on a monthly basis and they just mm, completely yeah. stopped. Um, the realtors that continued to actually spend money, they still did well uh, because everyone else stopped. But um, so I would say that I just, you know, I, I thought things were always going to be going on the up and up and up. Um, so that was really tough. And That's really tough. Yeah. What do you, you do the, when they you go to the AT? I, I did anything I could, and uh, probably was not. Uh, I probably made a lot of wrong moves. Um, you know, and, and I didn't. I learned too that material things are not nearly as important as I thought they were when I was younger. You don't need to drive the nice cars. A, a decent car is going to get you from point A to B. Um, learning some of those hard lessons of life, um, I guess, was was the tough thing. Going to the ATM machine and you know wondering how the heck am I going to actually withdraw money? How am I going to pay salaries? So um, you know everything from refinancing the house to mm -hmm. to selling certain you know equipment off to to doing whatever I could and. Thankfully, at that time, I had a good friend and happened to be one of my better clients at the time to where we just joined forces and uh, picked this thing back up and we, we really um, took control of it. Um, so I would say that was a highlight once we were really able to to get me back on my feet and, and thanks to, to him for helping me do that. Um, so we were able to grow the business but still wasn't turning the overhead like we wanted or wasn't turning the profits that we wanted to and numbers look great in the book but when you look in the bank account there was nothing really mm -hmm. there so um, a couple years ago and I would say um, probably uh, a scary moment of mine was where I took over the business solely along with my wife um, which is uh, everyone says is a no-no but uh, thankfully we have different roles in the business mm -hmm. uh, she really handles the front end of things the accounting the uh, vendors that we work with and it's, it's been a blessing it's mm -hmm. uh been the best move for me ever um, and just understanding that we don't need to stick with who we are at that particular point you can always evolve you can always mm -hmm. change you can always come up with different ideas um, and then you ask something that that other business owners don't do is that they're so stuck in their ways that they feel that they change that things are going to just fall apart um, but yet meanwhile they fall apart because they don't change um, so I, I would say evolving, seeing how we can really fit the needs of business owners. Um, so that's where we came on now uh, as dynamic marketing consultants, that we are more hands-on with our clientele. Yeah. Um, we're not doing everything and anything for everyone. We're picky and choosy on who we work with. We want people to understand and respect what we do. Yeah. Um, and our clients are very, very involved still in their marketing. They do give feedback. We're not always 100% right. They know their business better than we do. Um, but we do really dive into the business. We do a ton of R&D. Uh, and, and really, by the time we come out of it, we know more about about dental, more about uh, industrial products, right. uh, stuff about gyms. More than you ever want to know yeah. about some of this and stuff. You know, there's 20, 26 positions in Bikram Yoga, and you got to do this and that. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's uh, you know the things that we learn. So we get very, very entrenched, entrenched with the uh, the clients that we're doing work for, yeah. and those clients either come to us for. Uh, focus on maybe one particular campaign or one effort, um, but I would say most of our clients now are coming board uh, on board more for a long, longer time period, um, uh, monthly type of um, fee that we get <clears throat> to be their right right arm and really be their full marketing team. I mean, the prices that we charge. Uh, are a lot less than what it would take for you to go out and hire a full-time designer. Sure. Um, and we're not just a designer. We got the, the copywriting covered. We understand direct response copy, uh, design that is going to grab attention, and then, of course, all the printing experience and, and software behind us to actually get things implemented, where a lot of consultants who come to business owners with great ideas 
say, here you go, here's all the ideas, good luck. <clears throat> we really want to take it from start to finish to where we can get things out there to people and we can start pulling in opportunities and leads for the clientele. Yeah. Devin, do you think you were able, like you were saying, changing course is huge and it's also scary. Do you think you were able to do that because you saw your dad? I mean, you, you kind of saw that even early on. Did that have any effect on how quickly you changed or what you changed to? It did, and it took me some failures to not change as quickly as I should have, you know, and then back to the staff and overhead, you know, I mean, there's, you get so connected with your staff that you, you know, you really should probably let them go and do whatever you can to lower the overhead, but you're thinking things are going to turn around. So, <clears throat> again, with mistakes, um, yes, yeah, seeing what my dad did back in the day and how he shifted when, when things were going downwards in his uh, industry, um, I think was, was definitely something that I did follow. And us always, I think there was always this mentality or always this vision that I had on who we really were. Um, and you don't always hit the bullseye with names of companies and, and how you're doing things and positioning yourself. And, and as we evolved, you know, things worked, some things didn't. But, um, you know, now we're, we're at a, a place that I couldn't be any happier um, with, with who we are and, and what yeah. we're doing for our clients. So it's, uh, it, it takes time and you're going to be through ups and downs and, yeah. and owning a business. But, uh, you know, I can literally, with, with technology, I can be in Australia working right now. I can be on an island somewhere working right now. We're, we're connected and uh, the way that we structured this business, it allows us to have freedom, which I think life is, is really about all about. Um, I mean, we, we're workaholics, myself, my wife, and a lot of our team is are workaholics, which is great, but we also know how to take time out for ourselves and have fun. Um, and that's something that I also instill in, in other business owners that it's just not about what can we do to get the revenue up? What can we do to get you an extra vacation week in, in here so you can go relax? Right, and, right. Uh, so those are things that we're digging more into and, and getting more involved. So uh, we all have not only financial goals, but also personal goals that we're trying to yeah. achieve, which I, I want to know about from my clientele. Yeah. No, Don, I appreciate you sharing that because that's a very tough time for people to share but it, it really is relatable and people can kind of that hits home for people what about the proudest moment proudest moment yeah um, I, I would say um, really um, just our, our our evolution over the last couple of years um, and I would say that I'm, I'm probably on the, the highest of highs right now from from our last year and, and where we we've come from and some of uh, the, the learning curves and, and how our business came from where I was down in the dumps back up and uh, last year we just had a stellar year um, there's not only keeping the clientele happy but it's keeping the systems in line making sure that we have a lot of moving parts I mean you're dealing with uh, 50 different clients at a time and three drop campaigns that have six components yes. and all so I mean there's so many a lot to keep things. track of yeah. oh yeah it, it really really is and um, so I would say that just being able to come out uh, this past year as, as a nice uh, profitable year and we've had a handful of profitable years but I would say this year was nice but uh, more than that is the fact that the clients that we're working with are yeah. sticking by our side. They're spending more money with us. They see the value in us, and they're getting results. And they're actually getting higher revenues and, and response rates, like I told you earlier. And uh, that's why I'm that's why I'm in this. I mean, I have a passion for marketing, but um, to know that we're not only helping our business grow and get better, we're helping other businesses grow and get better. I mean, that's what what really gets me going in the morning. Yeah. Was there a celebratory moment that you like? you got a certain client like wow i've made it i mean not, not really you've made it but wow i got this client this is this was i looked up to them they were a mentor of mine and we got them as a client or, or something like that that was was personal to you yeah we've uh i'm not sure but i guess from from internet and from our marketing capabilities we've had some really really cool um opportunities and cool projects that we've worked on um I think uh, way back when I was uh, picked up by Exit Realty Corporate based out of Canada. Um, <clears throat> little old me in, in Tampa ends up developing their entire franchise marketing system, wow. um, developing all these different templates for their realtors so they can streamline their marketing. They weren't just running to Kinko's to get 
crappy business cards printed. They were all going through our system. Uh, that was really, really cool to be uh, honored in that way, to be part of their events. Um, that was nice. Um, working with a lot of the local sports teams. Uh, we did uh, some work with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, we used to do a lot of their printing and fulfillment, and we had some trade-out agreements, so I had nice seats for the Lightning, so that was always fun. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, the, the list goes on, really. I mean, we've mm -hmm. uh, done work directly with Allstate Corporate, which was really uh, interesting to take that on. We've uh, also helped them out. They were trying to pass a bill in New York, um, re regarding radio aviation people that were actually living in New York, but they were their addresses were based in Pennsylvania, so they're paying less taxes. Um, so we produced a video book for them to uh, help them actually pass a law, which was cool and wow. it, it worked. Um, uh, let's see where else is that? Um, we did uh, the American Airlines Arena, so uh, a video book that's actually got Mark Cuban's little fake uh, signature in it. It's pretty cool to to work with him. Um, it, it really is all over the board. I'm, I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else that, that sparks any uh, other uh, intrigue. I mean, we're doing software software company. I mean, this is something that was sent as a, a third drop mailer, which is a, a pop phone that you can what plug it? into your you can plug right into your uh, cell phone. Oh, really? So, uh, yep. So instead of having your cell phone up to your head and some, you know, if if you think it uh, does hilarious. affect the brain, it actually so works. Yeah, oh, it works great. So instead of a headset, you got this. Just imagine driving around like this these days. <laughs> um, but this was this was a last chance type of mailer. You know, okay, it's your last chance. All you need to do is plug this into your phone and give us a call. So this was a part of a mail campaign that was the final drop. I love it. Um, you know it's going to stay around. It's got their brand on it. Um, so fun, crazy things like that. Um, Rubik's Cube, um, you know, solving the puzzle. Um, and... You know, done different die cuts um, that are just oh, unique yeah. shapes. Um, this was for Susan Berkeley, the voice of AT and T. So we helped her out. Um, this is something we developed for her. She had people opting into a low value um, program on her her website, but she wanted to send out a nice welcome kit. So this went along with um, a box of tea. She's all about speaking and, and all that, so she had a nice box of tea in there mm -hmm. uh, with another to go coffee mug. So that was a welcome pack that we did. And then, um, I mean, just some of the, the crazy things that we do with uh, folds and die cuts. Oh, yeah. Um, this is called a flip piece, and we're going to try to do these backwards. <laughs> so it's crazy. like when you were a kid and you have those little uh, origami. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's easier for me to do it when I'm, I'm actually uh, having it in front of me. So there you go. Wow. And then it just That's flips pretty back. cool. So you're able to get four different unique messages on one one little piece of material. Um, 3D glasses that we've got too. Um, what do people these, use those for? Oh, you can see they make you look weird. Um, but uh, this was actually, I used this in a campaign right around uh, July 4th. So, um, you know, seeing fireworks with uh, that kind of visual, ah, <laughs> it's, I gotcha. uh, it's, it's quite interesting. So um, little things like that, but uh, yeah. we just we just love to have fun and, and push the envelope wherever we can really yeah. to, to, to get that impact. Devin, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate your time. I have one last question, but tell people where can they find out more? Where, where should we point them towards? Sure, absolutely. Um, one, feel free to email me. I do uh, check my email probably too much, um, which is devin, D-E-V-I-N, at yourdmc.com. That's Y-O-U-R, D like dog, yeah. M like Mary, C like cat, dot com. Um, our website, www.yourdmc.com. Um, you can definitely check us out there. We've got lots of uh, great uh, portfolio pieces on there, and uh, not sure when you'll be uh, getting this message, but uh, we're looking forward to a brand new website coming very soon that we're excited about that really highlights a lot of the campaigns that we do. So jump on there. You've got uh, from there you can get to my YouTube channel, Facebook, LinkedIn, all that good stuff. And uh, we're always uh, open to talk shop with you. Yeah. Uh, I'm not someone, uh, I always welcome an initial uh, consultation call to just get an understanding of what you're going through in your business and anything that we can do to help out or if you feel that we're a good fit for what you need in your company, just uh, give us a call or email us, the yeah. phone number 813-579-9540 and that is my, uh, my sales pitch there. All right. Uh, you know, I would suggest anyone go on your site and just check out, just 
just to get your creative juices flowing to check out the lumpy mails that you have, the pictures. I mean, it really gets you going as far as thoughts and ideas. So I would suggest anyone go on your site and check those out because that's a great point. Yeah. And, that, and that's something too for, for viewers that may be watching this and say, oh, I don't have the budget to do this. Look, you can do things at home off of your printer. Mm -hmm. You can do sales letters. You can go to the dollar store and buy trinkets to throw in your mail. Um, so anything that you can do to get started, if, if we're not the right fit for you, just make sure you're, you're getting out there to your current clients yeah. and, and those prospects in a different yeah. way. Yeah. And so, Devin, my last question, and um, I saved this one for last. You know, I did notice on the About page, um, someone with the same last name. So I obviously have to ask about, so what's the good about working with your wife and what's some lessons that you should instill in others who you sh people should maybe uh, watch out for, maybe some pitfalls okay. with working oh, with yeah. your spouse. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I totally just uh, went the opposite way of everyone. And when she watches this, I don't want you being sleeping on the couch for two weeks. But No, nah, uh, that doesn't happen. Okay. That's why we can work together. Okay. So that, that hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, um, yeah we just got um, – I've actually met Jen 10 years ago. We've been married for um, over three years now. It took me a, a little bit of time to make sure it was right. Smart I mean, enough. all of our friends were getting married so early and divorced and kids. So uh, yeah. that was one thing I did not want to get involved with. So we both took our time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just a phenomenal relationship. But yeah, I, I kind of went against the, the grain there awesome. where they say, don't work with your family, yeah. don't work with your friends. I've worked with my best friends. My my designer right now is my best man at my uh, wedding. Uh, my my major my marketing director was my best friend from from college. So there's the comfort level there when you have friends that you trust. So yeah. um, whether that's right for everyone, I can't say. But for mm -hmm. us, it, it works. We mm -hmm. have fun, and we all have a common goal in mind. Um, working with my wife. Yeah. Um, has has been really awesome, I and mean, we are not the type to argue. Um, have we had debates? Have I, you know, gotten loud at a couple times? Absolutely, things happen, um, but we're able to really separate work from from yeah. real life. And um, you know, if we do get into a spat, you know, when we're done, we try to leave the work behind. We may continue to talk about it a little bit, but any aggression or any kind of being upset, we just try to communicate and really just move on. I mean, it, these. Things that people get so worked up about or problems that pop up, they're really so non-important in life. And what really matters is, is having those relationships and people that you can trust. So I think separating it, we happen to have separate roles. Um, I'm more on the creative side. I'm dealing with the clients on the front end. I'm dealing with the consulting, the marketing advice. She's dealing with the, the QuickBooks, which I'm not allowed to touch anymore. Uh, she's dealing with the finances. She's dealing with um, the vendor relations, making sure deadlines are being hit, making sure that um, if my designers have something out of place that the USPS won't allow, she's going to correct that. Mm -hmm. So having different roles, I think, is where it really works best. We're not sitting right on top of each other, and uh, we're not dealing with the same... Uh, people every day. We're not dealing with the same um, problems every day. So uh, I think that's why it works. I would say if you're in, in the same actual office with your wife on every single day, it can become a lot. But uh, she's my best friend and uh, you know there wouldn't be anything that I would change. I mean, we'd love to, to be with each other. and uh, So I, I can't complain there and uh, we'll, we'll try to keep that uh, continuing. So 10 years from now, I can have the same comments. All right. Sounds good. Devin, this has been fantastic. I really Thank appreciate so it. Thank you. Enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, talking with you soon. And if there's anything else I can help you out with or any of clients, uh, yeah, I'd love to, love to chat. So thanks a lot again. Thanks, Devin.